I've always been a huge advocate of direct forum work. As far as I can remember, you guys can look through my old blog posts or even my old videos on this channel and you guys will find a lot of different experimentations that I've done for developing this muscle group because I never really wanted to just settle for the guy who just, you know, trains biceps and triceps. I want to have the full package. So if you really want to have a thicker form, you obviously have to train it. At least that's what I believe. But at the same time, there's certain lifts that after close inspection for the last couple of years, I've been noticing I'm not really getting much out of these movements at all. And when I even took them out completely, I noticed that in some case, I even make better gains from the lifts that I'm about to talk about in today's episode. So I'm not telling you guys, follow this approach. This is just my personal approach. And if you guys are, you know, maybe sharing similar thoughts about this approach, then go ahead and follow it as well. It may sound very minimalist to some, but to me personally, it's been working. I think I have great forms, and even if I cut down, you know, 30, 40, 50 pounds, my forms are still good. You know, when I was 230 compared to what I am right now, 188, my forms still look great. I'm still receiving a lot of good feedback on them, and they're still growing to this day. It's just a little bit slower, but slow growth is better than no growth. So before we talk about the exercise, let's talk about a little bit of anatomy, about the forms in general. So you basically have the beefy part right here, which is the forearm flexors, and you flip the forearm, and then right above you basically have the extensors, and then on the upper part of the forearm you have the brachioradialis, which is basically a lift, that, a muscle that gets hit when you do, for example, reverse curls, hammer curls, and it really adds that beefy part to the forearm. Now let's talk about the brachialis, for example. This lies right above the forearm. So I wouldn't really consider the brachialis part of the lower form, it's more on the lower part of the upper arm. So those are basically the big fish that we have to work with. Now let's talk more about lifts in general. So I was really on and off for the last couple of years with wrist curls. I've noticed that when you start going a lot heavier with them, you know, the range of motion is really small to begin with. And once you start getting heavy, you just feel a little discomfort in your wrist. But not to mention one of the most important things that they're extremely boring. I never looked forward to doing wrist curls in my training. And at the end of your training, you know, you have to do these wrist curls. It's the last thing you want to do. You know, most people just skip them all together. So I've noticed personally that if you want to get the biggest forms, I understand, you know, do your wrist curls. Me personally, I just don't like doing them at all. I don't feel them that great in my wrist. Um, I understand that certain people, for example, they experience this as well. And some of these people, don't have access to the right amount of supination in the wrist and the same thing could be applied with for example barbell curls you know they just don't feel good with those so maybe the fact they don't have access to that range of motion it just makes them feel it more comfortable when they do behind the back because since they don't have access to supination they for sure have access to the pronation and the pronated grip basically helps you do the wrist curl behind the back so you know that might feel a little more comfortable for people who don't really like wrist curls either, you can give that a shot. But me personally, even at that, even though I have access to the pronation, to them behind the back, I'm still not crazy about them. I just don't like them altogether. And I still have built great forms, even though I cut them out within the last couple of months. I did do the Grappito review. You know, it was a above average product. It still accomplishes that, but at the same time, I'm just not that crazy about wrist flexion. So now we got that out the way. Let's talk about wrist extension. You see certain people, you know, especially in the arm wrestling community, they'll go to the gym, they'll go on the bench and they'll basically do the wrist extension motion. With that exercise, that's even more boring than the basic wrist curl. So it's like, it's not about, you know, training being fun all the time. I understand you have to address weak points, but you know, the range of motion is so small, the loading potential isn't even great. I'm just not really big on wrist extensions, especially the fact that you could do certain exercises that are already gonna hit those areas in more of an indirect fashion. So that brings me on to my next exercise, which is the reverse curl. The reverse curl is more up my alley. You know, it's still, you know, still a curling variation. You're still hitting your forearms, or should I say your biceps to a certain extent. So, you know, you're getting a little bit of bang for your buck. It can help you with, for example, overcoming plateaus in your curling strength. So it's still a lift that you can still do. But I've noticed that, especially when I'm using dumbbells and I'm doing these heavy wrist curls, my grip doesn't feel that good. It feels like my grip is more of a limiting factor than anything else. And also the fact that when you're using dumbbells, eventually as the dumbbell starts getting heavier, it becomes more of a hammer curl than anything else. 
So I personally haven't really been that much of a big advocate of risk of uh, reverse curls either. Maybe from time to time, but I'll still do the wrist the reverse curls more than I do a wrist curl, but I don't do that many reverse curls either. So what does that really leave us with? A lot of people are talking about farmer's walks, think farmer walk are great, but at the same time, these are isometric exercises. Isometric are great, but at the same time, I'm not gonna tell you guys to do like a pec deck and just hold the top and then you're covered for your chest. I still am a big advocate of dynamic movements. You still need a certain amount of range and motion to grow muscle. So I'm gonna make a separate video on what I personally do for grip work, for dedicated grip exercises. But this basically leaves us with the infamous hammer curl. And this is personally one of the lifts that has never left my program. I always had some kind of hammer curl in my program. And I think a lot of you guys who have great forearms, you guys could attest to this as well. You know, the hammer curl, in my opinion, is the king of the forearm exercise. It's so bang for your buck. It hits the wrist extensors. It obviously hits the breaker radial. It's probably the best lift for that muscle group. And also regarding, you know, the wrist flexion, you guys are, if you guys are probably thinking about that right now, a lot of you guys are probably doing wrist flexion without even noticing it. When you do your heavy bicep curls, your wrists are naturally gonna flex a bit anyways because you're trying to get a bit of help from the forearms to lift a bit of extra weight. So if you guys wanna do your wrist curls, go ahead and do it. But I'm just telling you guys my approach for 2022 and I'm personally not doing them. I'm sticking to hammer curl variations. So I'm not just being a minimalist and just doing one. I have a good three that I like to do and I like to just swap them in and out of my program. I'm gonna show you guys the hammer curl variations I use and exactly why in this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first lift on the list is the strict curl done in a hammer style with constant alternation. You're probably thinking, why is he not doing a bilateral curl? Why don't you just curl both dumbbells at one time? And the reason why is because as this lift starts to get a lot heavier, the erectors really start to jump in and you tend to just extend through the low back a lot. With this, it keeps it more strict. It's easier to keep my back against the wall. It's way more humble, but the loading potential is still very good, but just a strict curl overall. And I personally like also having some alternating lifts in my routine. If you guys have seen that in the last couple of months of my videos. The second one is a rope hammer curl. I personally like to use a kettlebell between. I'm not trying to be fancy or anything like that, but I don't have a cable station where I'm at. And I personally like the resistance profile on this. I like the contraction I get in my brachial radialis at the top. And if you guys train at home, this might even be a great option for you as well. You know, take a heavy kettlebell, put it between the rope, and that's just about that. I would actually do this even if I was in the gym with a cable. I just really like this lift. Now the third lift, this is a bilateral curl as well. This is a hammer curl off a very high incline. And the reason why I like these is because these actually have great carryover to presses. You know, when you're doing heavy dumbbell presses, heavy incline, heavy seated shoulder press, and you're trying to get into place, that'll basically help you with getting that to position and it's just a great strict lift as well. So you're not doing it on a wall, you're doing it on a bench. And the last lift is basically a fat grip hammer curl, two inches. And the reason why I like this is because you don't wanna just only grip one inch barbell handles or dumbbell handles. So this, these lifts are all gonna develop your forms very well. You can throw in a little wrist curl in there as well if you want, it's completely optional, but I've just been doing this. My forms look very good. Very happy with the development. And yeah. So those are basically my four favorite hammer curling variations that I'm personally using in the year 2022 to build bigger forms. And I personally find these lifts way more enjoyable. Loading potential is still great. They have great carryover to other exercises. So an aspect of hammer curls a lot of people don't think about is if you like doing a lot of presses with dumbbells. Let's say, for example, you like doing a lot of heavy inclines or heavy shoulder presses with dumbbells. Oftentimes, people have trouble just getting the dumbbells, the heavier dumbbells into position. If you do a lot of hammer curls, you know, with heavy weights and strict manner, you're gonna find that just having those heavy dumbbells on your thighs and then just kicking them up might not be enough. You still need some strength in the forms, the brachial radialis, along with the biceps. And the fact that you've been doing these heavy curls, you're gonna notice it's gonna be a lot easier to get the weights into the proper position. So you won't need a spotter on each side to basically pass through the dumbbells it's gonna be all covered. So as far as the standards are concerned for these exercises, as far as the weight is, I would say above 50 pounds on the hammer curls for most people should do 
really fine especially since i'm giving you guys a lot of strict movements for the hammer curls it's really hard to cheat on these movements if you can work up to 50s or above your form should be plenty big you know you're gonna have some great looking forms and you're also gonna have some good looking biceps as well because it's still gonna hit that area indirectly but as far as biceps i have separate videos on that this is more about the forms and my current philosophies but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below how are you personally training your forms this year what's your plan to get the biggest forms if that's your personal goal because the way i'm thinking about it is if you're going to train if you're going to be in the gym if you're going to be doing some kind of curls you might as well also hit some forms as well you know you might as well do some variations that are going to still bias them and time's going to pass by anyway so you might as well have bigger forms in the future so hope that helps I'll see you guys next time